the world's greatest podcast in America, John Reed, Cody McClure. Cody, how are you, my friend? Oh, doing great, John. Doing great. It's good to be here. Good to be anywhere. Fine Thursday afternoon. Just kick back here, relaxing. I feel like that guy on CNN that got caught jerking off during COVID, you know, and they had to fire him. He, was, he didn't realize he was on camera. He was on that Zoom meeting and he was just pumping off. Oh, what a Get sick individual. Well, I mean, he's just, you know, he's taking care of something he needed to do and didn't think he was on camera. I mean, it happens to the best of us. Was he not in the middle of an interview? Uh, maybe, maybe he was, but who knows what kind of interview? Yeah, I was going to say. I, I thought the thing was he was a, I, I thought he was in the middle of some type of content. Like, I guess we'll start here. What's the weirdest place or time you've ever masturbated? Uh, I've jerked off in the car a time or two. You know, sometimes. You get a some woman sends you a picture of her her butthole or something like that. And you got to pull that penguin out and and take care of him in the HOV lane on the four hundred five. Pull that Top penguin cup. out. I don't think I've I don't know if I've ever heard of a penis referred to as a penguin. Officer comes up to you and asks where your other passenger is. You say right here, officer. <laughs> pull that penguin out. He counts for a third passenger. You can do it right there in the HOV lane. No, um, you know, the weirdest place that I can think of, I do remember doing it in a JCPenney parking lot when I was like, I was young. I mean, I was probably, you 22, know. 22, 23 years old. <laughs> 28. No, I was probably, uh, I don't know, 13, 14. I was just a boy. And mom had gone into the J.C. Penney store, and my mom is a notoriously long shopper, like like an exce- excessively long. She can't make decisions, which is where I get I, I inherited it from. Or I'm no good with decision making either. But she would go in a store, she would look at something, she'd pick it up, get ready to buy it, and then she'd take it back, and she'd do that with five different things. Just fucking miserable going to the store with my mom. So, you know, you're sitting in the car for two hours, you get kind of bored, you get inspired, and you find a victim. Are you there? Oh, yeah, no, I'm here. I was just thinking about you saying find a victim. I was trying to (laughs) trying to picture exactly what you meant by that, but I was afraid to ask. No, don't worry. I'm right here. Oh, well, I couldn't see your screen went kind of, you're kind of blurry on my end for some reason. So I didn't know if you were listening or not, but no, I mean, definitely, you know, I'm trying to think of places I've definitely jerked off in friends' houses. Um, uh, definitely. I mean, pretty much anywhere you can think of, honestly, like if you name a place, I can tell you yes or no. No, I'm good. I don't need to do that. I was just... Well, you asked. No, I know. Yeah, I don't need to find out all the places you have. My only story of JCPenney when it comes to deviance was I got got caught. They thought they had me caught shoplifting, but I had just had all of the spare alarms that they had on the shirts. They would sometimes just like break off and fall on the floor. And for some reason, when I was like four or five, I thought those were like Mario coins. So I would then oh. put them in my pocket and like collect them. <laughs> so then one time we went to leave and the alarms went off like crazy and, and they thought they had us and thought Ma was going to jail, thought I was going to the slammer too. And then they realized, oh, wait, no, he's just got all the all the coins, as I kept calling them. Well, that's worse behavior than anything I did. At least I wasn't stealing. Where's the coolest place you ever waxed your carrot? Coolest, weirdest, however you want to describe it. You know, no real places stand out to me. A car, I guess, driving down the interstate one time, but like, yeah, that was about it. You ever pump off at the station? No, no, came close a couple times, but <laughs> had to think about that one, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, I came close a couple times, but I was like, ah, you know, I definitely did. 
Huh? I wiped it. I wiped it on those old T-shirts in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I figure we're not ever going to sell them. So fuck it, man. You know, feed the bull. It said so. You fed it all right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For those who are not aware, at the uh, the old studios of Fox Sports Knoxville, I guess they're still the old studios. The bathroom is notoriously disgusting, and there's just T-shirts in there, or there were. Until they cleaned it up, just boxes of T-shirts that I guess we were planning to sell at some point. I don't know. Never got around to it. Hopefully those were not the ones that intern Christian's ma went through the box to to take some free ones home. Hopefully those she did not get those. You said you've done you it on the at least had the, You could have at least had the decency to throw them away. No, you know, you just wash it. I mean, I, I would never wear a shirt without washing it, so... <laughs> yeah. For all the people that, that just in the mail, for all the people that just put on their clothes out of the mail, just just know <laughs> that a warehouse worker might be as depraved as as this guy. What is it? Uh, Fanrunradio dot com slash yeah, just shop. down the interstate one <laughs> down the interstate one time. Is that illegal? Is it illegal Probably. to jerk Probably. off in your car if you don't? But I'm if you don't pull your dick out, like if you're not like exposing yourself, it should be fine, right? If you just got your hands in your pants. It's probably still reckless driving. <laughs> Could be, yeah. yeah. I mean, you gotta. I, I, as long as you, I don't see a problem with it, as long as you're adhering to traffic laws and you're not pulling your dick out, what's the problem? Well, it's hard to adhere to driving rules because you, you, you're not focused on the road. But I guess maybe there's not a rule of like, hey, must keep both hands on the wheel. I guess we allow for those things to happen. Hands-free driving is, uh, is is frowned upon. But I guess, yeah. wait, we're seven minutes into the show. I, I'm sorry. I, I had a special This Day in History planned. This Day in History, radio host, post-1980. Uh, Howard Stern? No. Don Imus? Uh, yeah, you you ruined it. Don well, Imus. On this day in history, he, he got canceled for his nappy-headed hose comment. Oh, yeah. Well, that makes sense because it's around the time of the tournament, too. So I remember that. Well, and that's those... probably the only story that most people know of Don Imus. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Well, those Rutgers girls were playing the Lady Vols when that happened, right? Like, I'm pretty sure that, that we... Yeah, maybe. I'm pretty sure we beat them. And that it was after that game that Imus made those comments. Which that is, is kind of weird. Yeah. It's kind of crazy that of all the the fucked up stuff that Don Imus would have said that like that's what got him, so to speak, canceled. I'm kind of surprised by that, actually. I guess it's just, it just depends on who hears it, you know. The wrong comments go into the wrong audience, and you're toast. Well, he had a, he had a big radio show in New York, so that probably didn't go over well. Yeah, he, he was big enough to. He was big enough for that to go viral in 2007, which means you're really fucked up. Yeah, but, like, I'm just saying of all the things he said over the years, like, I mean, Imus was a pretty notorious racist. Like, <laughs> you know. Yeah, like, I, I don't know any other stories attached to him, really, honestly. Speaking of racist, uh, I, I, I didn't Cody McCoy was born today on this day in history. <laughs> That's true. Speaking of racist, I, I mean, honestly, it was the day MLK was shot which I've told you that before MLK got shot on April 4th. So um, you could say maybe I was preconditioned to be a racist. Luckily I'm not. Luckily I, I managed to defeat that. But uh, speaking of racist, I, we don't have to spend a lot of time on it, but I do want you to, if you could maybe clarify uh, some comments you made on the last show. I have a quote here. And again, this is not me saying this, this was you. This was you, John Reed, on the last podcast. Quote, hey, I don't like black people. Black people aren't going to give me any money. End quote. Do you have any sort of uh, explanation for that? Do you, do you have, or maybe even just any remorse at all? Well, now you've just made the same mistake. Now I can cut you out saying that, <laughs> moron. Yeah. yeah, but people wouldn't be surprised if I said that. They'd be more surprised I, I, to hear you say it. I, I said it under the guise in character of a potentially raceless homeless man that 
that did not ask me or my my friend who is black for a sandwich. Mm-hmm. That that's what I was saying. I was I explaining just, that maybe he had those racist thoughts. I would just hate for this comment to get back to maybe a a black business owner in the local community there, you know, when you're trying to strike up one of these advertising deals. It's not the kind of thing you want hanging out there. No, I would explain. I was I would just be like, "Bro, I I'm on I'm on the side of justice. You know, my my co-host, it was actually, you know, born on the day that Martin Luther King got assassinated. So, like, you know, kind of, you could say that he was, you know, kind of MLK reincarnate. No, I don't want to say you're MLK reincarnated. That's not going to work. I don't know if reincarnation is. Is reincarnation supposed to happen immediately? Or are you allowed to to wait, you know, 20 years, 30 years before you before you come back? I don't know. You'd have to ask an Indian. Would you visit India? My best friend is Indian, but I got to say no. Mm-hmm. I got to say no. What, which city, if you were going to go, would you pick? Would you go to Mumbai? Honestly, I wouldn't go anywhere. Like, I have gotten to the point where I really hate flying. So oh, the boy. thought of being on an international flight that long is pretty much a non-starter for me. You made it to 34. And now you officially hate flying. This means well, in 10 years you're not going to go anywhere. Yeah, I think at the very least, like, I'm only going to go on trips that I can afford first class on. Or at least, like, the, 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 the rung right below it. But, yeah, I got really antsy for some reason on my last couple flights. And I just felt miserable. And, like, there were only, like, hour flights, which maybe that made it worse. As I knew how close we were to, to landing and I just wanted to get there. But I got really antsy and really bothered. So I definitely would. I'm definitely not going international. Maybe it would help. Do you think it would help if you just flew like first class? Yeah, possibly. Have you thought yeah, about the that? Seats would be bigger. No, that's what I just said. We're not listening. I said that I would maybe only take trips now that I could fly first class on. Oh, I didn't hear that. For some reason, things are kind of cutting out, and this uh, it shows like that my audio started over. I hope everything's okay with that. Because it should shows be fine. Are you, are you not on the Wi-Fi? Yeah, I'm on the Wi-Fi. It shows that I'm only like five minutes in, though, so I'm hoping everything's okay. It should be fine. Just keep going. Okay. Maybe it cuts out at some point, but... It, it makes me think about, though, you're talking about flying and traveling. Like, could you imagine being in a band for all these years? Or like like an entertainer who travels city to city, and you just do that your whole life? Busting, yeah, I think, I think busting would be pretty cool, actually. On a bus? Like a big, nice bus, yeah. Like a big tour like bus, yeah. You'd get pretty tired of that, though, eventually, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you want to fly? It depends. I imagine on tour you're not going much further away than like three hours That's from like true. Nashville to Atlanta to Charlotte to Louisville to you know whatever other cities, Cincinnati, and you know kind of work really, your way up. Who really gets on my nerves are these people that like comment on band posts and tell them to come to their city. You know, a band puts out their tour schedule, right? It's like okay, sure. we're We're going to be in Dayton, then we're going to Columbus, then we're going to Indianapolis, then we're going to St. Louis, boom, 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 finishing the tour up in uh, Phoenix. And every time, without fail, there's going to be 30 people that comment on it, and they're like, "Uh, come to Providence. Uh, Please come back to Tampa. It's like, we just put out our tour schedule. Okay, these are the cities we're going to. We can't go to every fucking city in America to just just to please you. And what is you commenting on it? What does that do? You think we read that? Do you think anybody reads that? Nobody reads that. You look at the little thing that shows the Twitter views, like the interaction post has got four views. Your comment had four accidental views of you saying, uh, please come to Provo. We're not coming to fucking Provo. We were in Salt Lake City last month. If you wanted to see us so bad, you should have came to Salt Lake City. You know? 
maybe on the next tour we come to Provo, maybe, but that could be three years from now. Hopefully you'll be dead by then. You just got to plant the seed, man. If enough people say, hey, come to Knoxville, <laughs> maybe they come to Knoxville on the next tour. You just got to plant the seed and make them think it. What if I your tweet people. blows up and, like, you get 800 views of people and, and like, 18 likes and people are like, yeah, I agree. Come to Boston. Really sad that you're not coming to Boston. Then it's, it's like these, added show. Boom. We're coming to Boston. It's these fake fans that pretend to be fans, but they won't travel. It's people who won't travel. I'll travel for all the sporting events. I don't know how far I would travel for a, a concert. It's the calls, the calls. Nobody calls me all day. I start doing this podcast. I get three calls. So now my timer's starting over again. Jesus I hope this audio. I hope this audio is okay. I'm sorry. I, I don't know what to do about these calls. I rushed home. I, I, I think I ate a burrito from Chipotle faster than anyone has ever eaten a burrito before. Oh, that's cool. I had one of those yesterday. Just so I could set up to do this podcast on your birthday. And then you just come in here and completely shit the bed. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying. I can't help it. I get these phone calls. I, I can't I help can... it. I'm popular. People want to call me and tell me happy birthday. And my creditors yeah, are after me. It's true. Yeah, I think that's honestly, I think that's what the last two calls were. I think one my was bill a, collectors want their money. I think one was a debt collector and I think the other one was a happy birthday call. So you, you nailed it on the head there. Uh, what do you think about this new woke Romeo and Juliet? Uh, oh, per, it, uh, I haven't seen anything about it. Tell me about woke Ro Romeo and Juliet. Well, we've got a black woman playing uh, Romeo. Which which one? Who's who? Juliet, I guess. Juliet would be the woman, right? We've got a black woman who's uh, I gotta say a little masculine looking. Just but she she's playing Juliet. And so the, the, I guess it's mainly the right side of the uh, political spectrum is upset about it, but, um, they want, is Tom, like a is Tom Holland girl. in the movie? Yeah. Ham Holland or something like that, I think. And, uh, I don't know the, the actress's name, but people are upset. And by people, I mean, right wingers on Twitter. Your circle. Not really I got no, circle. I got no thoughts in it. I, I'm familiar with the Romeo and Juliet story. I don't need to go and, and watch <clears> anything <throat> else. Hell, I never even bothered to watch the Leonardo DiCaprio version of, of Romeo and Juliet. Once you've heard Romeo and Juliet, like, once you've heard it, you've heard it. You don't really need to see a remake. You know what happens. Spoiler alert. Romeo kills sad. himself. It's kind of sad. They both kill themselves. Oh, do they? See, I don't even know what happens. They both I, uh, kill themselves after a fake suicide that came right before it. Yeah. And then she Taylor fakes Swift. that she killed herself. She fakes that she killed herself by taking poison. So then Romeo finds her and he's like, oh, no, she's dead. So then he stabs himself. And then she wakes up and is like, oh, no, he's dead. So then he, she stabs herself. I'm pretty what sure is how it fucking, goes. What a fucking pussy, this Romeo. You know, I'd probably kill myself, too, if my name was Romeo. There's supposed what to be like 15 name. in the story, too. Like, they maybe should have gotten a grip. Although, yeah, I guess like, back in those days, I guess back in those days, 15 was basically 45. It's like, can we graduate high school first? I mean, go to college. Maybe you find somebody else you like. Nope, this is it. And then Taylor Swift, she uh, built a career off of, she, uh, uh, what do they call it? She appropriated the story with her song, Love Story. Kind of problematic. Think, I don't think that's what appropriate means. I don't really know what it means. I'll tell you what else has been grinding my gears, though. These car wash sprayers. I've been going through the car wash. You know, I told you I live down this dirt road, right? So I've been, I got one of these monthly car wash passes. Cause okay, I, I'm, Brantley I'm, Gilbert. <laughs> I'm taking passengers again. And so I've got to keep my car clean. I like to keep the floors vacuumed. So I'm doing the monthly pass, 20 bucks a month. You can wash your car as much as you want. Am I boring you? This car wash that I've been going to has these people, and I swear to God, it's it's like three people that they're employing, and they just spray me before I go through the car wash. 
and, and it, what a useless waste of funds. I don't, I don't understand why these people are being paid. And like they, they have these signs out there that say tips are appreciated. And I'm sure that they are appreciated probably because they don't get paid much. But like, why are you even employing this job? It's, it, it accomplishes nothing. Now, I understand if you've got a lot of bugs on your grill or a lot of bugs on your windshield or whatever, maybe, you know, you get like the pre-soak, but they just got their water guns out there right before I go through the car wash and they just half-ass spray me off. And then I go through the high-powered blaster that actually does the work. Why are these people? Yeah, but it works better if you're, it, it works better if you're wet first. It's like, you know, kind of running some water over your dishes before you put them in the dishwasher. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a thing. What? You get yeah, you wet. like, you, you, you get... run the water over your plates before you put them in the dishwasher. Just a little bit, just a little spray, knock off some of the heavy stuff, and then you put them in the dishwasher. You get wet it's the same as soon concept. As you go in there. Yeah, but you want them to be a little pre-wet. If I've got the monthly pass, I'm going through there every day. Like, I don't need the extra spray. I don't need people. That, I, dude, I'm telling you, there's three people, at least two. Okay, Sometimes okay, three. tough guy. When you're in the shower and you wash your hair, do you get your hair wet before you wash it, or do you just put the shampoo in? It's apples and oranges. It's a different thing. You can thing. compare fruit. You can compare them. Do you put the shampoo in your hair before or after you put your head under the water? No, I get wet first. But listen, it's so different. you get wet but, first, and then you and then you start washing. Correct? Yeah, but I don't have to get wet three times. Maybe just employ one sprayer. They got three people spraying you with water before you go through this power blaster, and I don't understand why these people are being paid. I'm not saying they shouldn't have jobs. It's not their problem. I'm saying from the car wash owner's standpoint, like, what? what why are you wasting this money? Sounds like a pretty good gig, honestly, just out there and yeah. spray things. Yeah, they just stand out there with their hoses. Can't be good in the wintertime, though. No. Well, people don't go through car washes much in the winter, I don't think. But Cars still get dirty? I hate I hate that when you get, like, a bunch of salt on the road from your car, like if it snows or something, and then you want to go through the car wash, and it's, like, below freezing. And it's like, is the water just going to freeze on my car or what? I don't, I don't know. Anyway, um, Tiger Woods, you know, he's giving up sex for the getting ready for the Masters. Did you read that today? I saw the headline. I didn't click the story. Tell me more. I don't know anything else about it. Oh, okay, so he's just giving up sex. I mean, they always say that that's bad for your legs. Sex takes it, a lot out of your body. They say, you know, if you're training for something, try not to have sex. It just said Tiger's super focused on the master he's eating clean he's physically like real worried about his physical stuff he, he said he's even cut out his sexual intercourse which i think tiger needs to be cleared out i think he needs to be having sex first i, I don't want my tiger to be um you know abstinent a tiger needs tail nice did he actually come out and say this? He actually said he had given up sex? I don't know. I just had two different group texts that sent a screenshot of it. So I, I saw the headline, too. I, just, I, I was wondering why his old ass was volunteering this up. Maybe he wants us to know how ready he is for the Masters. Maybe, maybe it's a little uh, you know, a, a preview of, hey, I'm, I'm back. Yeah, no, not having sex so that I could fuck everybody that bets on me. Nice. That'd be a good rap lyric. Although no one obviously is going to bet on him to win, not seriously, but, you know, even make the cut, finish the tournament. I want to see him out there. I want to see him playing well, but me tell him saying that he's not having sex makes me think that he's worried about how his body's going to hold up, that he's not confident. If he told me he was fucking more than ever before, I'd be like, okay, Tiger's back. Tiger's feeling good. That back yeah. is loose. The legs are feeling good. The fact he's like, hey, I am walking such a tightrope that I can't have sex makes me think that he's he's not ready to go out there and compete. I think that's a good point. Prime Tiger would be out there slaying. I mean, he'd, be, he'd be doing his thing. He'd be fucking three times a day. Yeah, different women. Not, not really caring who found out, particularly his wife. 
Uh, speaking of having sex, I tell you who I'd like to have sex with, and that's this sexy Hungarian girl that I drove a couple days ago. Um, this woman, I picked her up at like a very nice luxury hotel, and she was wearing like dark sunglasses, and she just had a European face. I could tell before she ever got in, and the way she was dressed, like she looked like a like a classy woman. She was probably in her thirties, maybe even older than me. She may have been. I don't know, maybe your age, maybe perhaps even 35. I don't know. But she was dressed just like a professional woman. And I don't know how to describe it other than she had a European face. Do you ever see a pretty European girl and you say that's a European face? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of them running around Knoxville, but I've seen a couple European girls in my day. A sexy European girl has a little more wear on her face. Cigarettes. Especially, they smoke a lot of cigarettes over there. That's what it is. That's what it is. See, I was trying to get to the bottom of it. You figured it out. That's what it is. And she's probably in her 30s. You know, she's like 33, but she didn't look like a 33-year-old American woman. She looked like a 33-year-old European woman. And she started talking to me, and I almost... Oh, big boy, where are you driving me to? Yeah, she was telling me, in, in my country, in Hungary, we do not, uh, you, everything we walk, we walk place, we do not have car like you have car. That's, that's why we're not very big. We we just we walk not, everywhere. Uh, yeah. Oh, but she was so, so sexy. So sexy. Uh, I don't have anything else about her, really, just as I've been thinking about her. But, and then you <laughs> dropped her off and started pulling out your penguin and, and trying to get him home to Iceland. I wish. I definitely thought about it, but but no, not in traffic, but yeah, later on. Are you all excited for your trip to Knoxville? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I haven't been eating very well lately. Oh, I thought you were going to say you haven't been eating to try to be like a couple pounds slimmer, you know, when you got here. Like, hey, I've been kind of starving myself before my trip, but... But it's the opposite, huh? You're really ballooned up, eh? I've been doing I, – I did really good the couple of weeks leading up to my birthday. And then, like, this week I was like, ah, I'm going to Knoxville this weekend. So I just started eating, like, shit Monday. And then I, I had some tacos. I guess that was Monday night. Oh, you'd be very proud of me for the way that I, I assessed a bilingual situation. I got some tacos Monday night and I was at this, it was one of those like authentic Mexican stands, you know, where, and the woman didn't speak English. And I went up and I said, Oh, uh, two tacos, two, two. And she said, yeah, two tacos. Yeah. And she was like, uh, chicken or beef. And I, I was trying to say one of each. I said, one of each. I would like one of each. I want two tacos, one of each, one chicken, one beef. And she's like, ah, I do not know. And I said, so I just thought in my head, I was like, how can I fix this? And I said, uno pollo, uno carne. Uno pollo, uno carne. She says, see, sí, see. Sí. So I got one of each. And I was able to do a little Spanish. I knew just enough to get, get my point across of what I wanted. So. Take that, your teacher who told you you were never going to amount to shit. Take yeah. that. All those you Spanish. were able to order your tacos. Good job by you. Uno shout pollo, out, uno shout out to Breaking Bad and Los Pollos Hermanos to, to make you remember, hey, pollo means chicken. I've been around so many Spanish-speaking people the last few months. It, it really makes me want to know better <laughs> Spanish. Because, like, if you're anywhere in the southern United States, like, well, I mean, I guess Texas and California specifically, obviously known for a lot of Spanish-speaking people. But it is it is kind of a, a good uh, skill to have. I wish I've I knew came more. so close. I've jotted down various promo codes from the podcasts I listen to, and they'll have something like Babbel on there, Duolingo. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to sign up. I'm going to really try for three months to at least get a little bit better. At, at Spanish, and then I never actually pull the trigger and buy it or do it. So I feel you. Yeah. Is that the top language you would want to learn? Is Spanish? Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. I mean, it would be the most useful in America, for sure. Right. 
and, and that's there's why. other languages that are cool that like i would kind of like to know how to speak like maybe like uh, italian or something but spanish would be the most useful and i can probably tap in and remember you know enough from from high school and college to have a chance to grasp it a lot quicker if i was gonna yeah. learn a different language i'd carve out like a whole year to try to like really study it not like three what months is, what's your favorite language besides english I like English. Yeah. Okay. The, and then after that, probably physical touch. <laughs> Gifts. Just just by looking at you, I'm going to say German. Nice too. I don't. It would just be a guess. Not so much acts of service. Are you there? <laughs> the, screen, the screen froze. I can't tell. Oh, there you are. Yeah, no, I kept yeah. just going with languages. Uh, so are you all packed up and ready to go? Uh, no, not really. I still got to get a bag. I told you I'm just taking a backpack, though, So, because so, I'm flying on a broken plane. So what is that, one outfit? <laughs> <laughs> I can probably squeeze two in there, depending on what I... It looks like the weather is not going to be perfect, though, which I'm a little concerned about. That like some oh, of no, the nights... weather, the weather's trash, bro. The weather's trash. It's so cold right now. I'm in this hoodie, and I was freezing in this hoodie. And now I had a hoodie and shorts on, but that uh, that's it. But I, I was freezing to... outside. I might have to bring like a sweatshirt. That's kind of yeah. what I've been thinking. And I don't really want to do that. I haven't felt 30 degree weather in four months. So um, my body has adjusted to the, the warmth of being in the southern climate. So it's going to be a bit of a, a shock for my body, a bit of a body shock. My no, it's been cold. Be it's, yeah, it's been cold all week. It's been miserable. A man told me yesterday, Jesus is king. Spot the law. I just walked by him, and that's what he said. He said, Jesus is king, bro. I said, cool. Yeah, you have a good day, sir. I'm looking forward think to he, it, though. Do you think he did have a good day? Uh, no, he was homeless. But I'm, I am looking forward to seeing everyone. It's going to be very nice. A lot of people in town this weekend, too. I don't know if you've heard, but uh, some pretty powerful people going to be in town. Who is that? Jordan. Oh, really? For one. And also SEC Mike is going to be in town. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Two of the heavy hitters. Couple of uh, couple of national coverage type of folks. Yeah. CBS Sports, friend of Paul Feinbaum, some heavy hitters. Then there's just me and you doing this blurry yeah. ass podcast that you keep cutting out on. You keep cutting out too. I can't. I, I keep. Can't even tell if you're there, but I'm pristine. I, I, I'm cutting out because you're cutting out. I don't know about that, but uh, maybe. Uh, Bear also said something to me about maybe doing the drive Monday. So I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be recording some things. Like I don't know if uh, we're going to do maybe a live podcast. I mean, there's there's things that could happen. I might do this podcast. Maybe another podcast. Might do radio show i don't know bear's got this whole thing about how he wants to get like the old guys into the old studio one more time but uh, he invited you monday we're going to be out of the old studio on monday is that official i mean from what i've heard it's 95 percent. i do want to see the new studio i don't know if you're welcome around there i well, think it's I family know. only i think that's family only Come on, I'm a made guy. I would like to see the new equipment. Take a take a look. No, at yeah, it we had talked about. Nice it, is. it looks nice in the pictures. No, yeah, it's really nice. No, the boss man was talking about getting you back involved. So, I mean, I was just kidding about you not being welcome. He would be happy to see you. He gonna have any uh, shirts for me? Well, I don't know about that. Yeah. No. I hope, but well, I can uh, use some new shirts. actually, I hope not because it'd be too hard for you to travel back with them. That's true. That's true. I only have a backpack. Yeah, I can only fit two shirts in there. Um, 
my shirts though are getting like the deodorant stains. I have a problem with that. And I don't know how to fix it. Do you have any solutions to fi- get deodorant stains out? Yeah, because you know how like I like wearing Just black shirts. Throw it, throw it, throw it in the washer. Well, yeah, I mean you throw it in the washer, but that doesn't work. Like I get because I like wearing dark colors, and I get these. I use Degree for men. You know the the green thing, the green can. I've always used Degree for men. I, I'm a loyal customer of theirs. But lately, That's what I, I use too, baby. Well, do you not notice if you wear a shirt more than you know ten times, like you get it starts to get that uh, that white spot under the armpit? I don't know what to do about that. How much deodorant are you putting on? Maybe too much. Like, how are you putting your shirt on? Like my my t shirts are all pretty good. Like that I've worn way more than ten times. I mean, you are washing them in between, right? Yeah, I wash my shirts. Maybe it's, I it's still got some. deodorant on there. Maybe I do use too much because my mom mentioned that to me one time that I apply it too much. Because like when I unroll the stick, I really like a few swipes. Like I get good and oily coating under because I want to you know protect against sweat. So you don't want to be the, you don't want to be the stinky big guy. I get it. I understand. I even put I put a little under the tits. I put Every a day? Swipe. Yeah, I put a little swipe under the tits, and I put a little swipe under the back tits. I look huh. gross from behind. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. You remember when you took that picture of me? Or, or who was it? We were in the studio, and somebody took a picture of me, and I was, like, turned around. or Oh, maybe it was one of those videos we were doing for the TikTok or something. Yeah. And I saw my back tits, and I'd never seen that before. It's a bad experience. Because I don't look at myself from behind, you know? I was like, oh, I got real fat back tits. It's, also, it's always a bad experience. That, that happens to me at places with multiple mirrors, and I see just how bald I am in the back of my head, and I'm like, oh, man, it doesn't look that bad in the front. Yeah. In the back, I look absolutely terrible. Yeah. Nobody. Luck, luckily, I'm a straight male, so I don't have to worry about how people see me from behind. But that would have been tough. That would have been yeah, tough to really make it in that in that lifestyle. I feel like most people don't look good from behind, though. I mean, other than you know, like women, obviously, women with great asses. She had a great ass, and you got your head all the way in it. <clears throat> Speaking of back tits, I went to Houston yesterday. Okay. A lot of back tits there. I don't know if you know it's the fattest city in America. Were you aware of that? Houston's the fattest city in America? It used to be, unless it's been overtaken. And and I don't know if that's per capita or what, but it, it used to be the fattest city in America. Which makes sense, because they got a lot of good food down in Houston. Well, per capita would make it even more impressive, since there's so many people in Houston. You ever heard of Papa Do's? Yeah. You could catch me at Papa Do's eating steak and shrimp. That Is was that a rap lyric. Houston rap song? Uh, yeah. Lil Flip. Lil Flip's from Houston. This is on Like a Pimp. Or you could catch me at... It's like, so you can catch me at Papa Do's eating steak and shrimp. Something, something, something like a pimp. And then David Banner's like, or you can catch me at NJ's pouring it up. Something, something, yeah. something, girl. Lick at my nuts. That's a big. That was a very dirty song. No, it was a very graphic song. After (laughs) that, it's like so. Yeah, Southside, and we ain't giving a f u c k. Poke your girl up in the throat and make her swallow the nut. Yeah, Yeah, that was pretty graphic. Did Chameleon Air make an appearance on that record? He did not. He did not. But also another Houston rapper. Yeah. Yeah. Who are your favorite Houston rappers? Paul Wall. Yeah. The outro to this this podcast since you moved to Texas has been a uh, Houston rap song. Yeah. Chunk up, chunk up the deuce. I noticed that you never put in my uh, T for Texas, T for Tennessee song. <laughs> yeah, see, I was going to, but YouTube is so uh, tough on the instra on like putting like real songs on there because we mm. get flagged whenever we put our intro on there. Well, I don't usually put the intro on the YouTube for that reason. 
But the one time I did put our intro on the YouTube, it did flag it. But they said the artist was cool with us using it, and they didn't care. Oh, a lot okay. of artists aren't. Yeah, a lot of a lot of artists aren't, especially if you're going to use like full songs that are real songs. Do we ever get flagged when you say things like, quote, I don't like black people. Black people aren't going to give me any money, end quote. Does that flag? I, I think YouTube, I think the, the flaggers, they know context. And they knew that that was me quoting someone else's inner thoughts. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yesterday I went to Houston and it's a big, big city. Gave me kind of uh, Atlanta vibes. It's kind of the sort of the... If you're looking for like a sister city comparison, like, you know how I said Austin gives me Nashville vibes, Houston kind of gave me Atlanta vibes. Now, what do you mean by that? The layout of the city, the sprawl, um, you feel like you're in the suburbs forever before you actually get in there. There's separate skylines. You know how when you go to Atlanta you have like a downtown skyline and then you have like where the Coca-Cola building is like almost like two city skylines in different places. Houston kind of has that. Like I came into the city and approached this one area. I'm like, wow, a lot of big buildings. And then I look off to my left and I'm like, oh shit, there's the actual downtown. This place has a lot of big buildings, but I believe Houston is only behind New York, LA, Chicago, and Dallas in terms of metro populations. So Houston's a pretty big, you could maybe consider it almost a global city. I mean, I didn't did realize Dallas it was- pass it. Did, did Dallas pass it? I thought Houston was ahead of Dallas. They're both huge. They're both like, uh, they're, they're right there together. They're about the same. I think it depends on if you look at metro area versus like combined statistical area. I think it it kind of depends on what you look at. like, And I don't know if you count, like, Galveston. Is that technically part of Houston? Like, how far does the – it's got a big sprawl, big sprawl, a lot of freeways, a lot of highways down there. So, uh, anyway, good says good says joint. Good says joint. Uh, I, I drove a woman whose uh, – her friend had set her hair on fire by accident, lighting a cigarette. And she, she was very self-conscious about it. She's like, do I smell like burnt hair? And I'm like, I smell a bit of a hint of, I thought maybe it was just cigarette smoke. And she's like, no, my fucking friend burnt my hair. I guess they'd been drinking and she leaned down. He was going to light her cigarette and he burnt her hair. Classic. And then there was, this, there was this other girl whose grandma had just died. And like, she was hysterical. And I felt terrible for her because she said it had just happened. Like I was taking her to the Houston airport and I was the last guy she had talked to, or I mean, I was the first person she had talked to since her grandma died and she was just bawling. And to the point that I felt so bad for, I wanted to, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to reach back and give her my hand and just be like, I'm sorry. Like really, I I felt the need to, to just, uh, physically comfort like she was fucking bawling and i to the point i was very sad but then i thought and i'm like i can't reach back there. that's that can't happen you know so i just sat up there quietly and drove and i'm like is the temperature okay like you need some t- tissues you know I, I tried to be really compassionate but i wanted to touch her in a in a comforting way but then I could already see the headlines on the news, you know, Uber driver assaults passenger. <laughs> it's like, I can't, you can't do that. But sometimes you and, just feel like you ever feel like that. Like you want to just give somebody a hug or something. And, sh- and she was bawling her eyes out. You said, yeah. Like, like how much you talking? Like she was crying a lot, hy- hysterically tears streaming down her face. I got a I got a new answer to your disgusting the other question now. You're disgusting. Her grandmother I, just died. That is part of my kink, though. I think I, I think people crying do kind of, does kind of turn me on. Honestly, oh, jeez, I don't think you would have been turned on by this girl. She she was not physically attractive, but she just I, I just felt so bad for her because my grandma's old. You know, my grandma's eighty four. 
it would have been it would have been something had you reach back and try to grab her and then she starts just freaking out on you well yeah and that thought like it crossed my my mind like how can i make this person feel better and then i'm like what the fuck are you thinking you can't you know so i was like okay i'm not gonna do that but like now now when you got her out of the car did you get out and like get her back for her she didn't have she just had like a purse and a that was another thing she was saying. She didn't even have time to pack a bag. She just she's going straight to the airport and then straight to San that, Francisco. That seems a little extreme. I don't know, dude. She was hysterical. It I mean, unless it's like just it like was... the very last flight out of town, like you have time to throw something in a bag. I mean, well, no disrespect, girl... no no flame to her, but Grandma's already dead. You getting there an hour later doesn't bring <laughs> Grandma back to life. Like, no, I, I don't mean that in a dickhead way. Like, if you told me, like, hey, she's on her deathbed, and they're telling me I have to get there right away. Like, they're basically keeping her alive. They're saying I got three hours to get there. That's a different story. But if she's already dead, I mean, I, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I've had people die in my life. I mean, when, when Pops died, I mean, like, he was dead. Like, you know, like, I, I felt terrible because yeah. my it – was, it was awful because, like, my sister had, like – that was, like, the one time she had left the house – she like left to go like get something and like was actually gone when he died and she was having a meltdown like she's having you know a real conniption and she's like yeah worried about her you know trying to drive I mean she's not a very good driver as it is like I mean she's thirty years old and they barely let her drive on the interstate just because she's not yeah. great at it and and she's, she's and she's a woman you said so yeah and she's it's, a woman but she's a woman right. that's even she's on the low low ranking of women drivers and she's like bawling her eyes out where it's like hey look. He's dead. Like, you don't have to hurry back here. Take your time. Like, pull over and, you know, try to gather yourself. Like, w w you know, there's nothing you can do now. Like, yeah. don't don't wreck. Don't go to the hospital wrecking on top of it. Just take your time. Like, it's over. So, like, yeah. with, with her, like, that ain't going to bring – that ain't going to bring grandma back. Like, just pack a bag. You said – Get ready uh, a dress for the funeral and stuff. I mean, I don't know. You, you said no flame to her, unlike my other passenger that did get a flame. At, at, anyway. Um, I was going to ask if you, <laughs> you maybe could have offered her a hug when you got out, but you I, didn't get out. I, got, I, I was picturing maybe you get out and get her bag for her out of the trunk and just be like, hey, do you need a hug? It wasn't even a it, – it wouldn't where's even my hug guy? You, you seem like a real where's my hug guy in high school, so it could have all oh, came full you. circle for you. Fuck where's off. My, where's my hug at? It wouldn't have even been a weird thing. Like I said, the girl was not even attractive. Like she was as far from my type as possible. So it wouldn't have even been like a weird thing. But like I did feel like a like a, a thought in my head of like I wanted to just physical touch this person. It sounds so fucking weird when I say it like that. But like, no, it's beautiful, baby. No, it's beautiful. You, you know I, what I'm I, saying? That that's the human emotion. That's what separates us. Well, actually, I don't even know if that separates us from the animals because animals know how to, you know, console people when they're sad too. So maybe that <laughs> just maybe that's just the animal nature in us connecting us. Maybe that is as primal as it gets. It's like, hey, so and so sad. Brush up against them. Let them know that they're not alone in the world. Well, yeah, I just think it's a, beautiful, baby. Just a hug is like it, it does. It goes a long way. Just a hug. That's what I used to tell the girls in college. Like, Come on, yeah. just a hug. <laughs> just, just a hug. Come on, rub those boobies up against my chest. Come, Come on. on. It'll, make, it'll make me feel better. You know. Where's my hug? Yeah. Let me feel those titties on my on my chest. Yeah. People want I, I people want affection, man. Like I, I got said, I'm in a group text. Uh, multiple group texts is not to brag, but one of them today, I, I got a <laughs> podcast link. That was like a, a sad introspective podcast. And at the end, it's like a, a 15 minute monologue reading a story about this guy who's basically is breaking down the the amount of money he spent on his woman. But he's breaking it down. He's like, you know, so I spent a thousand dollars and he like breaks it down. Like, so but if you go by the hour, it's this and the hours that she made me feel good. And like one of them's like, you know, the times I slept and would wake up and just felt comfort next to her and. Then, you know, goes on to the breakup and it's like, you know, going on to how he felt after the breakup and everything. And I got one friend sending it who's like, basically, I think going through it, to, I think I think a woman has recently broken his heart and I think he's feeling down on it. And then another guy in the group text is like, sorry about this, fellas, but uh, my engagement ring just got here. You guys want to see pictures of the engagement ring I'm about to give my, my girlfriend? Oh, so the one friend's very sad and he's going through some shit. 
Yeah, the one friend's like missing a missing a lover, like thinking about dying alone, like worried about like you know having Cuban interaction and like having you know like just being haunted by a past love and weighing out whether or not it was worth it. And the other guy, like like twenty minutes later, is like, "Well, uh, is it bad if I show you guys my engagement ring? It just came in." He's trying to share positive news. Well, I felt like it was I felt like it was like wedding crashers when. When Owen Wilson's all depressed and and Vince Vaughn comes in to invite him to a wedding and Owen Wilson's like, I'm reading Don't Kill Myself books. And you come to me with this shit. That's how it felt playing out in real life. Why is your friend sending all this sad stuff in the group text, though? It wasn't it it wasn't like a bunch of sad stuff. It was just like, hey, here's this podcast. Listen to it. Is it all dudes in this group text or are there? It's all dudes. It's all dudes. Sounds kind of gay. What's gay about connecting with other humans? You're the one Having trying to emotions. assault your you're you're the one trying to assault your your driver that's because not, you yearn for touch. That's it's not, not gay. It's not gay, but it's giving off strong rape vibes. Giving out strong rape vibes. Oh come on, she wasn't even attractive. She now, was how does that make type. you feel? How does that make you feel? Well, my friend's not my type, and I don't think I'm his type. So, like, what's the difference? I just think in a group text full of guys, I mean, rarely do you get that emotional stuff, you know? I mean, I I understand we all have feelings, but you got to bottle that up and swallow it until you have a heart attack, you know? You got to push that down. You can't tell people you're sad. You're a man. I disagree. You got to let that sadness just fester in there. I think it's nice to connect with people. How many dudes are in this group text? Don't worry about it. Okay. Just a couple. Just wondering. Just a couple. It's not like eight guys in there sharing all together. <laughs> it's just a couple. <laughs> no, that's that's a beautiful thing. It's good to be able to talk about your emotions as a man. Well, I mostly just love the timing of him sending something so introspective and the next guy being like, hey, my engagement ring came in. <clears throat> I know you guys are worried about dying alone, but here you go. And though you don't have a wife, but look at me. I'm about yeah. to. Yeah. Well, good for him. You know, everybody's got their own journey, their own path. You could have found love in the back of that Uber. Again, she was not my type. Have you ever watched Love is Blind, bro? Like, maybe you need to step that's out. Not, that's You're, not true. How, how old are you now? 31, 32? How old are you? I'm 31. As of and, twelve thirty six p.m., I'm thirty one. And how many successful years would you say you've had dating? What do you mean by dating? Like getting some action, or like having an whatever you want to define it as. Whatever you want to define it as, getting action or emotional connections. Whatever you deem a success. How many of your thirty one well, years would you deem successful? I well, guess we'll call it. Let's call it twenty one years. We'll say since you were eleven years old. Well, they're two different questions because. Getting some action. You know, I've had my fair share of luck with that. I've had some women in my day. Usually around the springtime, I'll land abroad, and then that holds me over for the rest of the year. So it's getting to be about that time. I'm, I, I need some, I'm needing some action. It is, I usually have success in the month of, like, March to May. That's kind of my peak mating season, and then that, that holds well, me over. March is year. over, baby. You're, you're in April uh, now. Like, I'm, yeah, I know. I'm, yeah. But uh, even uh, then, like, if you're just looking for action, but wh- how many times have you felt a connection with a woman, with a very broad? F- very few. Very well, maybe few, switch uh, it up. Maybe switch it up. Maybe quit judging people off their looks. You should watch Love is Blind and just think think about the process that you're going through and how, this, how that's affecting your relationships. This, this woman was not my type. She was obese. She was, and, and look, I don't mean that in any sort of negative way, but she's just not my type. She's but what if she was like she the was... nicest person and you guys could have the best conversations? Well, I don't think, my, you know, my, I, my, my, my we, point we, is, my point is your type, two, your type isn't working. We come from two very different backgrounds. I would say just, just based on. She's Hispanic. You, no, she was not Hispanic. She, she was a large sized African-American woman. She well, was, it sounds like you guys got a couple things in common, at least. I'm. Not African American, but I am large. Yes, um, she was just not my type, you know, and so it wasn't about that. But I don't know. As far as uh, emotional connections, you know, find you're talking about finding like a, a, a life mate, something like that. Yeah, I haven't had much luck with that. You know, I just kind of get what I can get and then move on. 
But uh, eventually you start thinking about those kind of things, you know, like you'd like to have that eventually. Well, you know, just maybe try some different things then. Maybe quit being so superficial. What do you think? I need to go on dates or something? Yeah, you know, or maybe just give a couple chunky girls a chance. I don't like them. I don't like them. Are you worried about what people will say when you guys are together? Maybe maybe that's part of it, but the if if I can be honest, I don't I don't mean to sound crude, but the the monkey's too hot. It's too hot down there. You ever been with a big girl and noticed how hot? I mean, it's like fucking steaming down there, and it just uh, it's not. But but that steam does that steam not make it so nice and moist? Yeah, but not. I I, I just it doesn't turn me on a girl of that, of that stature. It just. Uh, you're 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 a, you're a dry guy, right? You're a, you're a, I don't use lotion when I masturbate, huh? Yeah, no, I, I like natural yeah. Lu- lubricants. Yeah, okay. I must check out. That's why you don't like the big girls in their their nice, warm, steamy, love making places. Okay, I get it. I just I don't like people who don't have enough self discipline. <laughs> I mean, hypocritical, maybe, but like I just. I assume it's kind of gross down there, you know, and I don't like, I how don't would you feel? How would you feel if they were saying that about you? <laughs> it would make me feel badly, but you know, like it's different for men, you know, we're, we're easier to clean and I, and I wear baby powder. I'm, I'm a long-term, uh, you just, it, it just takes three, three tubes of deodorant per week to get through <laughs> and, and ruining all your shirts, but easier to clean. Got it. I'm a long-term Johnson and Johnson man. That, that's probably going to give me cancer eventually. By the way, there there have been, I think, pretty reputable studies about that. That like talcum powder is not good for you long term, but I've I've used it my whole life. Either either Gold Bond or just regular Johnson and Johnson. Well, you know what else is not good for you? Stinky. So being yeah. the smelly person. So keep wearing <laughs> deodorant, please. Yeah. Any final thoughts? Anything else you want to hit before we get out of here? Uh, no, that's, that's all I really got. Um, we covered all my topics. Well, I hope to see you tomorrow. Well, we'll plan on it. As long as my plane doesn't crash. Keep me posted on any plans. I've left my Friday evening open for you. Okay. Well, I don't have any plans. I'm just along for the ride. So I, well, I know, but when you get informed of the plans, keep me, keep me in the loop. I imagine we just maybe go out somewhere, you know, maybe, maybe we meet out at a, a bar of sorts. Oh yeah. That's, that, that's fine. Just tell me what bar I plan to drink. I need to hydrate today. That's for sure. Get some liquid IVs. That's another thing. I got to get to the, got to go to the store and get some liquid IVs. Now, uh, do you want me to invite Marcus or no? Uh, Marcus. Let's go. All right. I'll, I'll talk to you later. See you tomorrow. All right. Bye.